Hey guys, Blame It On George here. I've been getting a lot of requests to do a third Lost Media Case Files video, and I can't believe it's been nearly a year since the last episode. As always, this series is for pieces of Lost Media that I find online that I can't dedicate a full video to, but I still want to talk about them. And that's where the Case Files comes in. Without further ado, let's dive in. Every now and then, the Lost Media Wiki Twitter account will post images advertising whatever media they're currently searching for. It's a pretty good way for those who are new to the community to get involved. For example, here's one on a Lost Biblical Subway commercial, another on a 3D platformer based on The Big Comfy Couch, which is a show that my sister and I actually used to watch, and even one on a Mario Screamer video. <laughs> but today, I want to focus on this one search that piqued my interest. The Hidogata White Shadow People commercial. Our story begins in 2004, when users on 2chan, an anonymous image board site in Japan, were talking about advertisements or commercials that scared them when they were young. Because most of the text is in Japanese, and I don't speak the language, I'll be using sources that are in English or Google Translate to decipher what's being said. It won't be perfect, but it should give you a rough idea of what this commercial is about. If anybody who is fluent Japanese happens to be watching this, feel free to make corrections or comments down below. Anyways, the mystery starts when one user comments. There was this terribly scary commercial, and I still have it constantly in my memory. There were two white human figures depicted against a black backdrop, and this noise that kept ringing. What I'm sure of is the part that went, Every two seconds, a man dies on Earth. So after the noise is repeated twice, one of the figures disappears. In the next instance, the human figures returns back to its old place, and now it's the other one that disappears. It was a commercial with only that repeating over and over for an extended time. Others on this thread began asking OP questions about the short. Some claimed to have seen it, while others believed it was shown in elementary schools, like a PSA. There are rumors floating around that this ad did in fact air on television, which would make finding it much easier. A lot of people on this thread could remember vague details about this commercial seemingly confirming its existence, but there was no proof. This image of what the white figures looked like was posted on the thread, which only made the mystery even creepier. Why would something like this be shown to children? Eventually, a user made this video to visually demonstrate what the short might have looked like. The two figures blink back and forth, with a clanging sound playing in the background. What's notable is that they're on train tracks. Some believe that this was a PSA for railroad safety, and that it was made by AC Japan, or the Advertising Council of Japan. This would explain why some recall seeing this short in school, and why it was particularly frightening, because it was warning them of the dangers of railways. However, this was seemingly disproven. Apparently, somebody got in contact with AC Japan, and they denied any involvement. All progress came to a halt, and the shore remained a mystery. Throughout the years, users from Japan would post about the commercial online. Like all urban legends, 
There were various reports and testimonies. Some claimed that there were no train tracks in the background. Others said it was only 15 seconds long. Apparently, there was a voiceover and or text on screen saying something on the lines of, one person dies every two seconds. Finally, the air date was narrowed down to somewhere in the late 90s to early 2000s. Sadly, this piece of lost media falls in the existence unconfirmed category. Despite the various reports from those who claim to have seen it, there doesn't seem to be any evidence for its existence. Interest in this piece of lost media was renewed in 2019, when users on 5 Channel made a new thread dedicated to finding the commercial. Eventually, this caught the attention of the lost media wiki, and this poster was made and tweeted out, advertising the search. It says, Have you seen me? On the hunt for the lost Japanese white shadow people commercial. It is commonly referred to online as Hirogata. Is estimated to be from the late 1980s to early 2000s and was allegedly shown in Japanese schools and potentially on late night TV in some areas. It is around 15 seconds long and was rumored to have been made by AC Japan. Came to notoriety in a 2004 2chan thread, but was allegedly first mentioned on the same site as far back as 1999. It's said to depict two white shadowy human figures fading in and out against either a monochrome background image of train tracks or a solid black, and is, according to most testimonies, a railway safety commercial. The figures are said to fade in and out in time with either a clanging sound or a railway crossing alarm. Amid narration and or written text to the effect of, somebody dies every two seconds, with two clangs or dings representing two seconds. As of now, this case remains a mystery. There are many recreations of it on YouTube, and probably more so now that I've talked about it, yet the genuine ad has escaped upload. Again, the language barrier makes this a bit hard for me to follow, and if there are any Japanese speakers in the comments who can elaborate on the details or talk more about it, feel free to if need be. Some of the most well-known cases of lost media become popular due to their obscurity. Clockman started off as just a forum post. A day with Spongebob was once just an item on Amazon. Go for a punch was just a comment on a 4chan thread. And so on. You get the point. Their lack of information is what makes them interesting. But I don't think I've ever covered a piece of lost media with so much known about it. Let's start from the beginning. The Cassini is a NASA spacecraft that, since October of 1997, spent 20 years traveling through the vast emptiness of space. In 1998 and 99, it flew by Venus. In 2000, it managed its way through an asteroid belt. In late 2000, it got very close to Jupiter. However, the real point of the mission was to get to Saturn. And in 2004, the Cassini finally achieved this goal. The spacecraft was able to uncover a few moons that were previously unknown to scientists. Furthermore, in early 2005, the Huygens detached from the Cassini spacecraft and successfully landed on one of Saturn's moons, Titan. The first moon landing that wasn't Earth's. I could go on, and trust me, there's a lot of really cool things about this mission. But needless to say, this was a monumental success. To commemorate this achievement, NASA partnered with Digimax Inc a Taiwanese animation studio, to create an educational animated film about the event, with a story and characters that incorporated parts of Cassini's mission. The project found its director in Harry Doc Clore, and officially began production in 2007, 
with apparently a budget of $10 million. Amazingly, the film featured an all-star cast of voice actors and celebrities. Samuel L. Jackson, Chris Pine, James Earl Jones, William Shatner, Mark Hamill, Tom Kenny, and get this, Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot on the moon. This is the only film to feature Armstrong as a voice actor, let alone an actor in general. With such a rich backstory and a powerful cast of voice talents, surely this film was a guaranteed success, right? It wasn't that simple. First off, the film seemingly went through some production issues. It was originally titled 2004, A Light Night's Odyssey, but was later renamed to Quantum Quest, A Cassini Space Odyssey. That's honestly not that bad. But what's even stranger is that the cast went through some dramatic change. Some of the voice actors were entirely removed, such as John Travolta and Michael York and new characters seemed to be added during production. According to Pace Magazine, this was because new images from the Cassini spacecraft, which was still in space during this time, made the filmmakers rewrite the story. Finally, and probably the most baffling thing about this movie, it was only ever screened at a single movie theater for six months at a Kentucky Science Center. Since then, Quantum Quest has been lost. But it's not completely hidden either. For example, there are some trailers online. Also, the film's website is surprisingly still active. Heading to their site, we're met with a behind-the-scenes video featuring the voice cast. Clicking on the Film tab leads us to a description about the movie. It reads, Quantum Quest tells the story of Dave, played by Chris Prine, a photon who refuses to grow up and leave the sun, until one day, circumstances force him on a quest to save his fellow photons from being annihilated by the Void, played by Mark Hamill, and his antimatter forces led by Admiral Fear, played by Samuel L. Jackson, General Ignorance, played by Tom Kenny, and Major Moron, played by Jason Alexander. The Void desires everything that exists to be destroyed. The core is a being that lives in our sun. He seeks to stop the Void. His children are photons, neutrinos, and photons born in the core of the sun. The best of the best of the sun citizens are selected to join the core's battle fleet, which fights the antimatter forces of the Void. To avoid spoiling your movie experience, Dave's story is kept a secret, but what we can tell you is that along his journey he makes new friends, overcomes many foes, and in the end, well, come see the movie and find out. With an all-star cast and Hollywood approach to storytelling, Quantum Quest seeks to appeal to everyone, from the science enthusiast to the novice who is fearful or uninterested in science or space exploration. On its surface, Quantum Quest is a sci-fi action film set in a scientifically accurate rendering of our solar system in 3D stereoscopic. Visually, the film blends computer animation with the fantastic images captured during recent NASA and NASA-ESA space explorations, including the International Cassini-Huygens mission. The audience is taken on a simulated solar safari, exploring the inner planets between Sun and Saturn, and touring the Saturn system's rings and moons. The film concludes with a Grand Canyon-like fight over the surface of Titan, using image and radar data from Huygens and Cassini spacecraft. Science is implemented in the film through its characters, particles and concepts, and the actions they take to save the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft. So it's safe to say that this film was made with a lot of confidence and high expectations. But that begs the question, why was it screened so quietly? Let's watch a trailer.
In other news, Mission Control has just announced the Huygens probe has separated from the Cassini orbiter. Huygens will punch through the thick cloud-covered veil that surrounds Titan, Saturn's largest moon. What marvel secrets will this international spacecraft cover? This is PCK case I'm saying. Tune back, back in, in to discover the answer. Cassini Commander, the Voice forces have broken through all our defenses. They are on course to attack the spaceship Cassini. She has deployed her sister ship wagons on a mission of vital importance for planet Earth. What difference can I make? I'm just a particle of light, of a simple photon. Reyna, it is vital you deliver the message we carry. Get out of there now. So, yeah, it looks not great. In fact, many would compare it to Food Fight, another animated film with an expensive budget, star studded cast, and production troubles. Also, both films were never widely released. Quantum Quest screened at one theater and Foo Fight was quietly released straight to DVD. As such, it's reasonable to assume that Quantum Quest never saw the light of day because it was poorly received, and never found a distributor, but that's just speculation. Let's dig a little deeper. By using the Wayback Machine, we can see that this film did in fact air at the Louisville Science Center, later renamed to the Kentucky Science Center. A couple of newspapers makes mention of Quantum Quest. One of the most interesting articles from 2017 states that Quantum Quest Festival 2017, hosted by the Science Outreach Center at St. Francis University, along with the assistance of the Appalachian Intermediate Unit 8, has been going on at multiple locations in Blair and Cambria counties, which are in Pennsylvania. The program is dedicated to increasing science awareness and inspiring a lifelong love of science in younger generations. This year's program is centered on the Quantum Quest, a Cassini Space Odyssey movie. Dr. Harry Clore, a nationally known science writer and producer slash co-director of the movie, introduced Quantum Quest to 300 students in 4th, 5th, and 6th grades from Connemaw Valley, Hollidaysburg area, Shades Central City, and Winber School Districts. He gave a series of talks at local schools and facilitated a discussion about the role of technology in sciences. Their Wikipedia page does mention that the film was released in Asia in the fall of 2010, which I guess makes sense given that Digimax is a Taiwanese company. Eventually, this mystery was posted onto r slash non-murder mysteries, and that's where I discovered it. I feel like, out of all the pieces of lost media in this video, Quantum Quest has the highest chance of being found. There's just too much known about it for it to not appear somewhere or be found by somebody. Still, I can never predict the outcome of these lost media mysteries, and I had no idea this thing existed until it was posted on the Reddit. So, as of the writing of this video, it is a mystery. Now let's get back to the darker stuff. Mujer, Casos de la Vida Real, or translated as Woman, Real Life Cases, is something of a lost media mystery in Mexico. Created in response to the devastating 1985 Mexico City earthquakes, the series explored real life traumatic situations sent in by viewers. It would recreate two cases per episode, followed by some advice by the show's host, Silvia Pinal, and the occasional guest here or there. The goal was to inform and help those who were struggling during this difficult period. As time went on, the show began to move away from earthquake-related stories and focus on other real-life situations. And it got dark. I've personally never seen this show, but according to Wikipedia, the later episodes focus on themes such as domestic violence, rape, child abuse, and others. After an over 20 year run, the show ended in 2007. 
a few years ago, on the Lost Media subreddit, a post was made about three lost episodes from the show that were apparently extremely disturbing. It reads, Please help to find lost slash banned creepy episodes of a Mexican TV show, aired in the USA too. Mujer Casas de la Vida Real was a Mexican anthology telenovela, aired on television for more than 20 years, and it aired in many countries including the USA and even Russia. Although it's small, there is an active fandom of Mujer Casas de la Vida Real, and we all agree that there are at least three extremely disturbing episodes that are now lost, or even banned. They are the following. La Ultima Sonrisa, or The Last Smile, also known as the Werewolf episode, transmitted around 1999. Synopsis. A girl fears the werewolf and insists herself that the monster does not exist. She is taken by her parents to a party full of weird creepy people, and through a dramatic and crude handling of the camera, it's noted that everyone is anxiously watching the girl. At a certain moment, from a dark corner, or maybe from currents, a hairy hand, almost a claw, attracts the little girl and takes her with them. Sometime later, a bloody bag is found, and a small hand is seen between the folds. The girl's father screams horribly. It was never known who raped and killed her. Los Colores del Cielo, or The Colors of the Sky, also known as The Boy with the Balloon, transmitted around 1999. Synopsis A poor woman has several children. Their old TV does not tune well, the signal and the children complain. One day the mother walks to the street, and one of the children begs for a balloon, but the mother doesn't have enough money, so she refuses. Sometime later, the boy is kidnapped, and the mother is desperate. Some days after, he reappears at the door of his home, with money in his hand, a balloon in the other, and his face is bloody and deformed. Bleeding Bazin's look at the mother. The bucks he carries are the payments for his eyes, surgically extracted. Unexpectedly, the television is tuned well, and the child asks, What color is the balloon, mom? Sangre contra dignidad, or blood versus dignity also known as The Tunic, transmitted around 1996. Synopsis A wayward wealthy guy has a little sister. Their parents are far away for business, and the teenager must care for his sister. The dude organizes a night party and fools around with friends. He's drunk, and mocks and abuses his own girlfriend, and harasses on a mendicant gypsy woman. During the late night, the little sister is playing around completely alone, and a hooded person calls her. She smiles and follows the strange person. At this point, the sun is rising, and the guy notices his sister's disappearance. So he looks for her desperately. He goes out and notices a nearby crowd near an electrical pole. He approaches to see what's happening. Blood drops fall on his face, and the guy screams. His little sister's corpse is hanging at the high of the electrical pole. She has big, bloody, widely opened eyes, and a handmade poster that says, Happy Birthday. Currently, all these episodes are missing, and their plot has been compiled from testimonies of viewers who saw them in one of the few times they were transmitted, and that left a deep impression on their memories. Personally, I only remember seeing the episode of The Child Without Eyes almost 20 years ago, and it was creepy as hell. Along with these memories, there are the typical associations that are usually made towards lost episodes like Candle Cove. That is to say, dizziness or vomiting when seeing the episodes or possible exaggerations towards how horrifying they were. I am sure that the episodes were not really so macabre, and our childish imagination enlarged their creepiness. However, if you have any memory about the episodes, or even better, if you have the VHS, it would be wonderful if you commented. Any contribution is welcome and is grateful by the fandom and by all those who still have chills and goosebumps when we remember them. As I stated earlier, this is one that I honestly knew nothing about. No article of it exists on the Lost Media Wiki, 
and the post is quite old. I decided to ask Dysphoria, one of the co-creators of the Spanish Lost Media Wiki, for more information about the status of this mysterious program. According to him, the show is a pretty well-known case in Mexico. However, because the series was aimed at middle-aged women, and the show is relatively old, it wasn't archived properly, and many episodes are missing. In fact, it doesn't even have a page on the Spanish Lost Media Wiki, because I think not even they know how many episodes are lost. Thankfully, since this post was made, the second episode from our small list has been found, albeit with an annoying watermark. There is one more Reddit post I want to go over before closing things off, and this is where things get really interesting. A year ago, a different OP posted about the same show on the Lost Media subreddit. There's no new information about it, but the OP from the first post left a comment that caught my attention. Hi, I'm the OP of the post about the lost episodes of Mujer. I can confirm to you that the episode Sangre Contra Dignidad was found a year ago. Apparently, some unknown fangirls recorded it in VHS when it aired in the late 90s. Unfortunately, the old VHS ended up in possession of a little group of otaku guys who showed it just one time, but they don't want to share it again because of dumb reasons. Nonetheless, we know the plot perfectly, even the actors and some dialogue, but it's difficult for this VHS to be shared in the future. We are looking for another copy, but there are no results as of now. Similarly, Dysphoria also makes mention of some ring of collectors that share these rare episodes among themselves, or at least the third one from our small list. Who knows how many episodes are lost, and how many are being withheld by these strange video collectors. I'm not up to date with the Spanish lost media scene, but this is a fascinating case to me, and obviously I hope something gets found. But for now, it is, and has been, a mystery. Hungry? Grab a Snickers. That ought to do it. Our final case has to do with a mysterious commercial one Redditor posted about on r slash tip of my tongue. Although somewhat uninteresting at first, his memories were later corroborated by others online. This is also something of a Reddit mystery as well, so we're going to go through a lot of different posts and comments. In October of 2020, user Mothman's Cigar posted this onto Reddit. Got this sub suggested to me before posting to Lost Media, wondering if y'all knew. Context is that I just got told a story by my boyfriend's mother and father about a commercial they saw. Here's the details. This is in America, Texas specifically at the time. It was a commercial that came on in 1999 to 2000. They only saw it once on TV at night. It was some sort of candy commercial, including women. I asked what they were doing, and the mom said they were inside a living room having something similar to a baby shower. The commercial is similar to a Snickers commercial, but they didn't get to see the candy because the commercial cut off. The detail they remember the most is that the lady turned into some freaky demon before being handed the candy, then she calms down. The mom thinks the candy might have been gum. Anyone have a single clue what this was? They say they haven't seen it since, so I want to find it. Google isn't much help here. Thanks. This post really didn't go anywhere, but one commenter, Into the Bounding Main, stated something interesting. Someone's asked about this here before, and they said it was some kind of oat bar. Pretty sure it had oat in the name. Sadly, it went unsolved, but it's intrigued me ever since. I've searched for it myself many times in the past, but I don't remember the product name. Searching oat demon, or something along those lines, just kept bringing up some kind of energy bar, 
but I don't think that was the product in question. I'll try to find the post about it. I think it was several years old, and I found it by searching ad-related threads. It's also making me think of something involving passengers on a plane, but I'm unsure whether that was a similar commercial someone mentioned in the same thread, or an unrelated ad for granola bars I happened upon in my search. Edit. I've searched every keyword I could think of, but Reddit's search function is next to useless. It definitely used to show up on the sub a year or two ago. Racking my brain to see if I can remember the name of the product that got suggested in the thread. So it seems like this wasn't the first time this mystery was posted online. In fact, after doing some digging, I was able to find that this commercial was asked about four years ago on Reddit, which might have been the post Into the Bounding Main was talking about. A user known as Zune77 posted two threads asking for this commercial, a now deleted one on r slash no sleep, and one on r slash tip of my tongue. The tip of my tongue post says, not sure if this is the right place slash best place to post this, but no one seems to have ever seen this line of commercials. They ran on Comedy Central, maybe elsewhere, but I know I saw them there. In late 2000, early 2001, they were advertising some sort of food slash protein bar, and the premise was someone was, or someone would, be at a gathering and a friend would ask if they want junk food. Then, all of a sudden, that friend would look like some sort of demon staring right into the camera. It was truly startling and horrifying, and no one else seems to remember these existed. If it wasn't for one other buddy who claimed to have also seen these, I might write them off as a hallucination. Anyone else remember these? What product? Any YouTube links? I need verification that I, and my one friend, are not delusional. Thanks in advance. Unfortunately, this thread garnered only one comment, and it didn't really go anywhere. Thankfully, the deleted post on r slash no sleep did have some helpful comments. Many redditors suggested different theories and possible leads, such as the commercial potentially airing on Adult Swim to scare off children. Adult Swim ads could be unsettling, to say the least, especially if you're a young child, so this does seem plausible. Another redditor found this statement on TV Tropes' Nightmare Fuel page for advertisements, where they list creepy or disturbing commercials. It says, There was a commercial for a car bar, and it took place in a baby shower. One of the women in said shower offered the pregnant woman some cake, to which the pregnant woman declined, instead sticking to eating said car bar. Then, without warning, the face of the woman who offered the cake went all demonic and scary. Also a case of what were they selling again, as absolutely no one knows the name of the car bar being advertised. The most interesting comment comes from a deleted user, JL224758, which is only available on Remove Edit. I've seen this commercial, it was out probably in 2000 to 2001, and it used to scare me and my roommate half to death. I think there was two of them. One seemed at a baby shower, another at an airplane. Both copied other commercials before all of a sudden, the lady went actress is crazy in the camera. It might have been for some car bar, lol. It was so scary that we never got what it was for. Is it possible that this commercial was so terrifying that it made people forget what the product was, leading it to be lost? I'm not sure. We've had cases of terrifying pieces of lost media that ended up being not scary. And that makes sense. Children are more easily frightened than adults. That's why cases like Clockman or Cracks were described as being terrifying. Because the OP saw them as a child. To be fair, if I saw a commercial where a woman suddenly went crazy and turned into a demon or something, I'd be terrified, especially as a kid. However, the fact that several people came forward claiming to remember this commercial being particularly frightening is interesting. And the late 90s, early 2000s did have a lot of weird commercials, as we'll later explore. The mystery didn't pick up traction until Into the Bounding Main decided to dive deeper down this rabbit hole. He spent the next couple of months researching the lost commercial, and posted his findings onto Reddit, 
He starts by talking about the past Reddit threads and the mention from TV tropes, which we've already covered, but then reveals his own findings, which is a good summary of everything that's known so far. I have contacted all participants in the threads, and most were unable to provide additional details beyond what have been said in their posts and or comments. Key Details There are a number of locations from which accounts of this commercial originate, including Canada. These places are Quebec, New York, and Texas. Updated Southern California, Ohio, possibly Finland too. The commercial is estimated to have aired pre-9-11, most likely around 1999 and 2000. It is possible that it was airing as late as 2003, but this is only a guess on the part of one person contacted. Most are pretty adamant it was closer to the end of the 90s. One channel it's said to have aired on is Comedy Central, though in my opinion, it is not likely to have been part of a show or skit. The fact that nobody remembers the brand suggests that it is not a household name type of product. Similar commercials. I have compiled a playlist of commercials, which utilize a similar theme or concept, which are confirmed to not be the subject of this search. The playlist can be found here. This playlist contains a list of commercials on YouTube that have been ruled out. Some of these include an Eggo waffle commercial. It's so yummy. Mm -mm -mm. We have all the Eggo to ourselves. Dolly, 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 dolly. Get away from my Eggo! I'm Dolly a Chipmunk. A Snickers commercial. And a nicotine gum commercial. Not anymore. Don't put that in your mouth. Tastes horrible. Ice mint Nicorette? It tastes great. Great? 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 So you're craving for what it really is. Ice mint Nicorette. So that's my write-up on this mysterious piece of media that's fascinated me since I first read those TMNT posts a couple of years ago. The most recent query has only served to pique my curiosity once more, and I am very much invested in finding this thing. Update. New lead. The biggest yet. I just received the following comment on a previous post I made about the subject. I remember seeing this commercial when I lived in Ohio around 1999 or 2000. The bridal shower phrase was, What's wrong with pigs in a blanket? Another version took place on a commercial plane, and the flight attendant said, Come on, try the snack mix. I only recall seeing these late at night, and possibly on Comedy Central. I have tried to find a reference to them over the years, but no luck. And that's the story of the lost creepy commercial. As far as I'm aware, those are the latest updates from this little internet mystery. I would certainly like to see this commercial, and I do think it exists, but I have a nagging voice in the back of my head telling me that it's not as creepy as people are remembering. Similar to the Hidogata commercial I talked about earlier, this could be a collective false memory, but I guess that's always an option. But as you all just saw, there were some strange and even terrifying commercials back then. I'm really curious if there's anybody watching that can remember something like this. I personally don't, but I'm hoping somebody out there does, and we can get this years old mystery solved. But for now, this case remains a mystery. And yeah, that's another episode of The Case Files. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>